Hey guys, they say that life insurance is one of the absolute most difficult products to sell. I've been selling life insurance since October 2013. I started as a 23-year-old young man. I've got now a decade, which is crazy to say, now a decade in this business. And I want to share with you how to sell it. It's simple. It's actually seven steps it breaks down my presentation. We teach our agents a flip chart presentation. What I'm going to do is summarize the process for you, the viewer, and help you, teach you, help you to understand how to sell life insurance. My name is Kyle Studer. I recruit and train life insurance agents now. I run an independent agency. We focus in the senior market with final expense, Medicare, and annuities. For more on that, you can check me out at kylestuder.com. Follow me on Facebook and at Instagram. I'm at Kyle Studer FE. So, how to sell life insurance. That's what we're going to talk about. The very first step that I lay, the foundational block that I lay with every single agent that enters my agency and with you who, who watch this, this is my number one piece of advice. Okay? You want to focus on the how to, and I'm going to get to that. I'm going to tell you some very specific things I say, and I would encourage you to write them down word for word. Copy the tonality, copy exactly what I say. I'm going to get to that. But I want to talk to you first about something that a lot of agents discount. Listen, 92% of life insurance agents who get a license, after two years when it's time to do their continuing education, they don't renew. Why? Why don't they get their insurance? Why don't they keep their insurance license? It's because they never made sales. They never made money. They never got serious. And a lot of these folks fail out of this business because they discount what I'm about to tell you. The very first thing you need to do if you want to sell life insurance successfully is you need to learn how to operate from a servant mentality. You need to make this. You need to trick yourself about making it about the people. Making it about the people. You're providing a service. When you provide a good service, the money follows. You focus on the money. You chase the money. You're giving no value. You get no money. So step one is you have to adopt a servant mentality. My personal mantra for years, and I learned this the hard way in the field of selling, putting pressure on myself, not making money, making money sometimes, other times I didn't. Finally, I learned my personal mantra came to this. I'm here to serve, not to sell. And you'll see that on my website, kylestudor.com. I'm here to serve, not to sell. And whenever I could operate from that perspective, focus on what I have to give rather than what I'm there to take, Things always worked out for me better. So you can do that by listening to positive and encouraging audio, getting a mentor who teaches you this, what I'm speaking to you, rather than buy more leads. You got to close them, you know. There's a lot of bad mentors out there, so be careful who you partner with. So step number one, how to sell life insurance is a servant mentality. Now the first thing we're getting into the home, the first thing that you're going to do when you get to the home to sell a life insurance policy Say it was a referral, say it was a direct mail lead, a Facebook lead, a Google lead, a YouTube lead, doesn't really matter, an old lead, a new lead, you have an appointment, you've shown up to their house, or you've door knocked this, this client, this lead, and they're now letting you into the home. The very first step, once you are in the home, once the appointment has begun, you have immediately began the rapport building rapport building rapport bond and rapport if you were to bond to something once you bond to something you can then move it if you're not bonded to it you're separate from it and you cannot move it cannot influence it so we have to bond we have to have common ground something that can bring us closer together that we can relate that we can become intertwined about so where their guard can come down a little bit they can trust me a little bit more enough to guide them and to influence them throughout this presentation so you start with the good intentions, and then you're building rapport. Rapport, it's like, think about, it's awkward, right? Like, it can be awkward. Now, if you've done this a thousand times, you've been in a thousand homes, and no, it's not awkward, because you'll find it's oftentimes the very same conversation. There's a couple different variants of conversations that could take place. Um, and once you've gone through pretty much the rigmarole of building rapport, there's only so many ways that... There's only so many things you can really talk about, right? So I'll give you an example. The first thing I always say when I'm building a report, how long have you guys lived out here? As I'm coming in the door, bags on my shoulder, first thing I do is take my shoes off. 
Um, there's more intricate things I could get into. If you want more intricate stuff, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, go to my playlists, click on my in-home presentation. There's a playlist that says uh, presentation, and there's a f uh, four parts, five videos, four parts that explains why we use a flip chart, and it goes pretty in depth. It gives you a little bit more context. But so I come into the house, I take my shoes off. Why? I want to create a feeling of warmth immediately. If it's really messy, I might ask them, would you like me to take my shoes off? Because I create the same feeling of warmth, and they're probably going to tell me no, almost always. If their house is dirty, they're going to say, oh, heavens no. No, please don't. <laughs> like they're afraid. But I still create that warmth because I'm being considerate. And immediately, I'm portraying myself as considerate, kind, polite, Okay, and then here soon I'm going to exhibit that I'm also in control. So, building rapport. How long y'all lived out here? Wow, long enough to know if you like it. Oh, great. Hey, tell me the story behind this. Hey, are these grandkids? I'm looking for pictures. I'm. Um, oh, this is cool. Oh, I, I like the garden outside. Do you do the gardening yourself? Oh, I like that Mustang in the driveway. Is that yours? Or what kind of work did you do, John? What kind of men like to talk about their occupations? What kind of work did you do? Women love to talk about their family, their grandchildren, their children, their husband, their relationships, right? So this is kind of rapport in a nutshell. We're talking. And I could kind of just awkwardly be sitting at the table, what may be awkward to you as a new agent, and I'm just calm, and I'm just chilling. And my hands are always on top of the table. I don't put them under the table. I don't have them in my pockets. My hands are on top of the table. And I'm just breathing easy. So how long, uh, and I'll have, I'll have husband and wife side by side. If I'm a male, I want the husband closest to me. I want the wife on the other side. I don't want to be cozied up against the wife and then the husband on the opposite side. Okay? Doesn't matter if this is young clients, old clients, doesn't matter. It's just a principle that you always follow. So I'm sitting here talking with the clients. So... How long have y'all been married? Wow. 37 years. You guys have any free relationship advice for me? I got married, you know, two years ago. Yeah. Usually the guys make a joke. Usually don't get any serious advice. They'll make a joke, blah, blah, blah. Then the wife will say something a little bit more thoughtful. <laughs> Generally speaking. Okay, so I'm building rapport. And it's, you're just trading conversation. You're allowing them to ease into the situation. We're all easing into the situation together, right? You don't want to jump the gun and say, here's the lead. Why'd you send it in? Well, how much does this cost? Yep, you're right. Here's the prices. Oh, well, wait, we can't afford that. Oh, okay. Have a great day. No. Like, it's like, you see these stitches on my head? So we just had our third baby girl. Wife had our third baby. Baby comes out. Dad faints. Dear God. In the hospital. Bust my head open, right? Well, why am I telling you this? Listen. They had to put a shot in my head here, right? There's a nerve. They're feeling for this notch on my eyebrow so they can numb a particular nerve so they can put the stitches in here and it doesn't hurt, okay? So when they were doing this, all throughout the process, we're not, they're not being herky-jerky, sit down, get the needle out. No, they're, they're managing my expectations. We're easing into it. She says, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Managing my expectations. So, we are going to numb this little nerve. There's a nerve up here. It's going to numb all this. We're going to make sure that you can't feel anything before we start. Um, you can keep your eyes closed, focus on your breathing, and nothing unexpected is going to happen today. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to feel for a little notch. I'm going to tell you, right? She's managing my expectations. So she doesn't just like, I'm not like looking over here and she drives a needle into my head <laughs> and I'm shocked. I don't sit at the table and I'm not abrupt. Why just send the lead in, you know? I don't jump right into pricing. That's just not how it works. So we're easing into this. That's the purpose of rapport building, okay? So we've shown up with the mindset. We're building rapport. After we've built rapport a little bit, there's a transitional. There has to be a transitional moment. Listen, there's a lot of agents who struggle, 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 struggle with this right here. They're too scared to evoke emotion. They're too scared to get to the real. If you don't get to the real... You know, earlier I said life insurance is one of the hardest products to sell. That's only when you don't sell it with emotion. This is an emotional sale. People purchase by emotion. They justify with logic. 
Emotion is what drives it. If you're too chicken, too chicken to evoke emotion, to tell a story what I'm about to tell you, then you won't evoke emotion. It won't get real. You won't get below the surface. And they're going to tell you, you've done a great job today, Sari, Susie, John, Kyle. You've done a great job today. We're going to need to think about it. They don't need to think about it, guys. You just didn't do your job. So listen, mindset, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve, not to sell. Build some rapport. Let everybody ease into the situation. Transitional moment. Guys, I could talk to you all day long. You guys are great people, great folks. Love this house. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Could talk to you all day. Hey, did you guys want the 10-minute version or the 10-hour version? <laughs> okay, 10-minute. Yeah, that's most people say that. That's an easy transition. Or, guys, I could talk to you all day long. Do you mind if I kind of tell you how I got into this business or, or why I got into this business? Right, so I never really grew up being, wanting to be an insurance guy. Um, but, guys, uh, so... Long, long story short, um, my, my mom and dad, they were married for 20 years, and 20 years into the marriage, my mom left, and my dad, like, went off the rails. Now, that you see, this is a transition, you hear me? Servant mindset, I'm here to serve, not to sell. Build rapport, ease people into the situation. Transitional point, I'm telling an emotional story. I go on to tell a story about my mom and dad. They split up when I was 14. My brother was 12, my sister was seven. Mom and dad got into substances. Mom got into an abusive relationship. Dad lost a house, vehicles, lost a one acre uh, lot, lost everything. Me, my brother, my sister moved in with my grandma Ruth. My grandma Ruth, three years later, got breast cancer. Two years after that, she died. I take this information, I put it into a story, like I just told you. Like I'm crafting a story. Like, this is serious. Like I lower my tone, I wrinkle my forehead. Why? Because they lean in. I want to draw them in. Okay? So I tell a story. I'm not going to tell the whole thing right here, but you get the point. You can go check out the story on those YouTube videos I mentioned. I tell the whole story. Google Kyle Studer storytelling. There's multiple videos about that story and others that I tell that are very effective. So we tell a story. This is a moment of transition. Now what I do is I tell them the story and I say, guys, so that's why I believe in what I do. I saw what this did for my grandma Ruth when I was a kid. I, so I really believe in what we do. I've sat at countless kitchen tables now and I've seen the good, bad, the ugly. But help me understand your situation, Mary, John. Help me, let's process this together. Powerful phrase. Let's process this together. Help me understand your situation. Everybody that I meet with is special and unique. Help me understand your situation. And here's the question that I ask, and I'll explain this to you. This is called downhill selling. I don't know where you were. Or what was going on in your life when you got the card and sent it in? But what was it that made you guys decide to get this? It's very important that you shut up. Don't speak. Guys, what I'm taking you through here, this is the same darn thing every single time. Every single time. Every single time. We don't change it. Every single time. Every reason. How, how good can you get if you have a process that makes you money and you can do as much as you want? Want to do it more? Buy more leads. Yep, just go do it. Get an appointment setter so you can set more appointments, get in front of more people. Learn the process, guys. This is the skill. Two things to make this business work for you. Two important elements of selling life insurance. Skill and will. Here I'm talking to you about a presentation. I'm talking to you about skill. How serious do you take this? Oh, well, if you don't take it serious, you won't you don't you don't make serious money. You want to make serious money, you take it serious. You see the correlation? So where we're at right now, <clears throat> mindset, building some rapport, telling a story. From there, we tell a story, we ask a very powerful question at the end of that story. The story primes the pump. The story creates the environment that we need 
for our powerful question to be able to work. Okay? There's a story I could tell you. YouTube a story. YouTube Kyle Studer. Timing is everything. And it tells you the importance of the order of what I'm doing here. It's important that the story comes before the question and not the reverse. I don't want to ask them why they want to buy insurance and then tell them a story about that would influence them to buy. Because they could answer me like, well, we want to know what it costs. If you do a good job with the story, with rapport, with wanting to help them, building some rapport, telling a story, then you ask a question. The order matters. It's always like, it's like a combination. Hey, the combination is 1, 20, 3, 4. Okay, so it's 1, 20, 3, and 4. Okay, 1, 20, 4, and 3. Won't open. Hmm, 1, 20, 3, and 6. Won't open. 1, you see what I'm saying? It's, a, it's just a slight change. Something so slight can change the result. That's why once we found this that worked, we have a 17-page slide. It's a PDF. It's step-by-step. -step, takes you through the process. Teaches you how to sell. You don't have to memorize it. It's principle-based. Once we found that, we don't change it. We don't make exceptions. We don't, we don't. We don't change it. This is how we do it. So we tell the story. And oftentimes, guys, when we set it up properly, oftentimes for me, guess what they do? When I ask them, I don't know where you were, what was going on in your life when you got the card and sent it in, but what was it that made you decide to get this? What was my question? Very assumptive. What was it that made you decide to get this? I'm assuming they've already decided to purchase the policy. And as soon as they answer this question, that's, that's like a trial close. They've already agreed to me. Like they, they, they tell me why they decided to get it. From there, it's smooth sailing, and I'm just a consultant. I know they want to get it. I have to find out what they qualify for, what they can afford, and I'm on their side. We all want them to get covered. They want coverage. I want them to get coverage. Now let's help them get it. This is called downhill selling. There's a lot of ways to do it. Some agents, they act like they're dragging like a 500-pound sled uphill. What I want you to do is turn around. Let's take some of those plates out. We don't have to drag 500 pounds around. This doesn't have to be a hard thing to do. Right? Selling life insurance is the hardest thing to do. I mean, not if you have a process, not if you have a plan, not if you practice it, not if you take it serious. So this is downhill. Early on, we get the commitment. There's an emotional peak. We get the commitment. It's downhill. It's consultative. It's easy. It's the best way to sell. All right, guys. So let's catch up here. We've went through mindset, rapport, story. Now, the, the end of this, I'm going to rattle through. <clears throat> next step in our presentation is credibility so we show some things like we show our insurance license we let them know some of the carriers that we represent uh, why they're good carriers and what's the purpose of that um, show them more pictures of my family I want them to see like I'm a real person I want them to understand that I'm not just a salesperson I'm a father I'm a husband I'm a Christian I'm a brother I'm a son I'm a real person I'm a real human being I'm not just a salesperson I'm a real person and I want them to get that feel and that impression from me. So I, I establish some more cred credibility. We continue on. We go into what's called a fact find or more like a financial assessment. So we ask income, savings, current life insurance policies, and health questions. Those are important aspects you need to know to make a good recommendation. right? If, if someone's going to be cremated and they make $1,200 a month on Social Security and they have... Um, a policy that their mom bought them when they were 18 years old and they pay, you know, 20 bucks a month for it or it's paid up and the policy is worth $25,000 and this person just wants to be cremated, they don't need to buy more insurance. And I might tell them that. So we do, we do a fact find to find out what's your situation and based on that, we'll make a recommendation. And we, we of course, we, we teach you and train you how to go about that, how to make recommendations. So that's the fact finder, the financial assessment. Once we have the fact finder and the financial assessment done, you're going into practically the close. There's a, there's a few slides in here. Um, one important slide in our presentation is we, we uh, reedify how the policy works. 
Price never goes up, benefit never goes down, comes out and matches your social security, um, covered immediately for those who qualify, pick your beneficiary, the payout's tax-free. So we're just kind of like boom, 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 running through features before we show them prices. We're running through all the features, making sure that they understand it. And I'll oftentimes in these slides, when I'm going through my presentation, I will be communicating this. Does that make sense? I'm nodding my head up and down. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Make sense? Sound good? Does that make sense? All throughout the process. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. I'm guiding them through the process. I'm making it easy for them. I'm managing their expectations. I'm telling them what's coming ahead. I'm not doing anything surprising or crazy. I'm not being abrupt. I'm guiding them through the process. I'm making it easier for them to buy. This is called getting out of your own way. A lot of agents just get in their own way, and so they struggle to sell. They get in their own way because they don't have a routine, they don't have a system, they don't have a roadmap, they don't have a process, they don't take it serious. A multitude of issues, okay? But if you invest in leads, you have a mentor that answers their phone, that has training in place, they have tools, they have a roadmap, you can win in this business. So after we run through the features, we go right into the close. We show three options. Any more than three options, people get confused. We don't show them five. It's too much. I might show them for final expense, 60 bucks a month, 80 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month. If they make 500, 600 bucks a month, 700 bucks a month on disability, and they pay 400 for rent, and they got a $100 car payment or whatever, in the financial assessment, if I see their budget's really tight, I might adjust those numbers, make them lower, make them higher if they have more disposable income. So, but I'm showing three options. I'm asking a closing question. I walk them through the three options. I say, so John, Mary, uh, you see that $5,000 is just 60 bucks a month. $8,000 is just 80 bucks a month. $10,000 is just 100 bucks a month. My question is, what would give you peace of mind knowing that your daughter or your beneficiary is going to be taken care of, but also be comfortable in the fixed budget. This is another time where you really need to shut up. That silence is a vacuum. Give them space to think. Don't get nervous. Don't blurt something out. I can, I can, I can lower the price if I need to. Don't do that. Chill. You need to learn how to chill. So you offer that, and you shut up. That's the close. They pick an option, I say boom, this one here. Okay, and this number right here, 60 bucks a month, 80 bucks, 100 bucks a month. That's comfortable for you? Yes. Okay, perfect. Can you grab your driver's license real quick as they're getting up? Oh, hey, and grab your uh, bank information. I don't need you to tear a check out, I just need the information at the bottom. And I'll be getting, I'm making no eye contact about the bank information stuff, getting my tablet out, getting my iPod out. Going right to work. Okay. From there, the final step is final questions. Everything's done. App submitted. We're done. I say, guys, do you? Uh, this may seem a little redundant, but do you guys you feel good about what we did today? Getting yourself covered for a hundred bucks a month. That's comfortable for you. Okay. A hundred bucks. That's not gonna take the cheese out of the macaroni or the the weenies out of the beanies. <laughs> okay. Hey, what do you do if you have a question? Call Kyle. Look, Mary, I've got you saved in my phone. Mary Smith, client, Montgomery County. We wrote you a policy with Foresters, Prosperity, Royal Neighbors, Mutual Mall. Doesn't matter. Wrote you. I show this to them. I save their contact. I show it to them. Hey, you're in my phone. Why is this important, Kyle? You already made the sale, bro. Get out of there. Run. Get the check and run. Dude, in life insurance, these plans have to stay on the books for nine months. You're getting a nine-month advance. So if you're a brand-new agent in my organization and you write a policy for 65 bucks a month, which is about the average, your first-year commission is $780. It's pretty good. What you get deposited in your bank account is a, is a nine-month advance or 75%, nine out of 12 months. So your deposit will be 585 We ask final questions Put, to put the nail in the coffin, so to speak. To nail it down, to tie down this sale, to secure it, 
I've never had anybody back out at that time after going through all this stuff. But and so you might say, well, then why do it? Because it's important. You just put that last nail in there, man. You, you clean up, clean up, clean the slate, polish everything up before you leave. Like, don't leave a mess. If they gave you something to drink, get up, put it in the sink. Um, thank them for the water. Thank them for the coffee, whatever. You don't just get the check and get out. From there, I'll also leave a handwritten receipt, generally with a business card stapled to it. I'll also give them a business card that's a magnet they can put on their fridge because I've seen that people will keep those on their fridge for like 10 years. It was a small investment on Amazon. So guys, selling life insurance, it can be a challenging thing, especially if you have never sold before, but it is one of the most rewarding careers. How ironic. Challenging with equal or greater rewards. That's how life works. Anything worth having in life is uphill. It's not easy, okay? So there's a lot of organizations out here that recruit agents like, you know, make 100000 your first month. Like, you can get rich in like a year. Um, you know, if you're that person that it gets really excited about that, I would caution you and tell you that it's probably BS, right? Um, you can make a very good living selling life insurance. It's going to take a lot of work on your part. You don't get serious results unless you treat it seriously. And so this has been how to sell life insurance. Hopefully this has been amazing for you. Hopefully this has helped you or clarify what that process looks like. If you want to know more about joining an agency, if you're looking to partner with an agency, I would love to chat with you. We start agents at 100% commission. It's kylestuder.com. You can scroll to the bottom, uh, fill out the contact card, or find me on social, Facebook, or um Instagram at Kyle Studer F E like final expense. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so you're notified. We encourage positive comments and uh, on the videos below. And hope to talk to you soon. Have a good day.